All right, guys, Kenny Smith, Total Force Holdings. Uh, Y'all are gonna have to forgive me on this. I'm out of breath. I just finished a pretty good little uh, cardio session here, doing some of George St. Pierre's Rush Fit stuff. Uh, I'm also just getting over a chest and head cold, so I'm liable to have a coughing fit. First thing I want to talk about, and it's it's one of those things that I see. I was, I was awake the other night when I shouldn't have been. I should have been in bed, but I was digging around on Facebook. I read an article by Greg Elifritz. If you don't know who he is and you're into this kind of thing, you're, you're friggin' wrong. All right, dude knows his shit. Never met him, but from reading this stuff, I'm pretty sure we can get along. Uh, every time I find it, I try to share it. Business page and personal for that matter, but it's just good shit. So, Greg, kudos to you, as always. The article I read called this was good as usual. Uh, the article that fought it was uh, discussing use of flanking tactics, as in maneuver warfare type stuff against uh, active killer. Now, when you look at modern law enforcement tactics against them, uh, especially the immediate action rapid deployment stuff, which there's nothing immediate or rapid about it, but that's a topic for another video. Um, Friggin' has what in the military we call frontal assault. For those of y'all that don't know, uh, I spent six years in the Marine Corps, so that was my public service. Uh, it was my honor, honor to, to, uh, to serve. So having said that, I understand maneuver warfare. Uh, as much as any lower level enlisted guy can. Thing of it is, with maneuver warfare, you've got two elements at all times. Uh, a base of fire element, at least with small unit tactics. You have a base of fire element and a maneuver element. Uh, the maneuver element does exactly what it says. You're, you're moving, ideally trying to get around a flank uh, and to the rear of the enemy. While the base of fire element establishes a base of fire, which would be firing to keep the... Uh, uh, opposition's heads down, and of course, neutralized targets. And I'm gonna be wiping my eyes a lot because I'm sweating like a motherfucker right now. But uh, it's getting in my eyes, it burns. So. But anyway, uh, that's that's the that's how the Marine Corps fights wars. That's how the Army fights wars. Uh, maneuver warfare has been proven very effective uh, since its first really big time use, which were the uh, German Vermont Blitzkrieg campaigns of. Uh, the early stages of Second World War, uh, as pioneered by uh, General Heinz Guderian. I forget what grade of general he was, but what he what he wrote down became Blitzkrieg and essentially uh, modernized warfare. At a small unit level, you see uh, guys no, no less than Erwin Rommel coming to mind if you read his book, Infantry Gripped On, Infantry and Attack, or Infantry Attacks. Um, great, great read. If, if you're in the business of trading lead, either in the military, law enforcement, uh, you know, civilian security guy, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're in, in a line of work where you may need to move to an attacker and trade lead with them, that, that's a good read. Especially if you're working with a, a smaller team. But, uh, anyway, he, if you read that, you see a lot of use of what would become maneuver warfare used at the small unit level. And, of course, that's been being done for centuries, millennia, even. But, uh, where in the law enforcement world, with an active killer, you typically see... The, the, the reaction plan kind of looks like this. Uh, get in a position of cover, wait for a few more dudes to show up, and you go straight at it. Okay. Let's think about this. We're gonna, one, I'm going to gonna wait for more people. Okay. I'll give you that. Especially if you don't have good intel. You know, if, if you send uh, one cat in there by himself against, you know, 12 active shooters, uh, it's probably not going to end well for the one cat. So, you would need to look how to maximize your fighting ability, which we're going to get into in a minute. The next is, let's let's wait till we get a team, good to go, and let's go straight at him, ideally to stop it as soon as possible. Thing of it is, you're conducting a frontal assault. Now, when we look at uh, historical instances of you know, active mass murder incidents, we typically see one of the common trends is barricading entryways which makes it a barricaded or fortified position. So what you have is you've got these tactics meant to stop this mass killer. Okay, fine, cool, I agree with that mission. But you're essentially entering a barricaded subject at that point. You're going from active and free, mo free moving where if you have your access of entry you know, effectively denied, you, you, this should be treated like a barricaded subject just, just the same. Now... I'm not going to get into how to make other entry, but trust me, there are ways to get into anything. Um, now, in the military, it's simple. If you lock your door, I breach the wall, okay? 
but I understand you know not too many law enforcement guys have slap charges laying around, so I'll give you that. But you can always break a window. All right, you can always break a window. Um, you, even your bullet resistant glass, th there's a way to break it. Okay. So I mean, ram a breaking right through that thing and put a flashbang in the hole or some shit like that. There, there are always a way to do it. Uh, that's up to you to understand your methods at your disposal to get in to an area. Um, if you chain door or whatever, there's a the tool out now, and I forget who makes this, called the breech pin. It's like a souped-up road flare that behaves more like a cutting torch. So th there's ways. Understand your methods of entry, right? That way you can actually maneuver on, on, on the target because they're no longer a suspect. When, the, when, the, when they're actively shooting people, there's nothing suspected about it. They are a target. Because you know this guy is shooting people. A suspect implies that they're innocent. But when you watch them do it with your own eyes, all right, now you've got evidence of guilt. As in, you saw them injure other people, assault them with a deadly weapon, murder them, so on and so forth. So when you're, when you're approaching the target, if you come at them head on, from the military line of thought, you got a, at least a semi-fortified position with probably better sight lines then uh, you, you would have approaching. So you have to treat this almost like it's an elevated position. In the military world, if you're attacking elevated in or fortified position, you should be prepared to lose three to one. That means you should be prepared to have three guys, or three gals for every person in there that will be trading bullets with you. Uh, some of the departments in my area are awful small. If you need three guys, that might mean the only two two people on the road and a county deputy or a trooper. Uh, so you, you, you may have to wait a minute to get those numbers, which which fine, whatever, I, I understand. If you look at the school police in here, there's one or two officers per school. Well, congratulations. If you use these tactics without waiting on other people, you don't have the amount of numbers needed to successfully take an elevated fortified position. All right? This is historical fact when it comes to military, military elements. Look at... Uh, a perfect example of attacking elevated or fortified positions would be the North Vietnamese attacking the Marines at Khe Sanh, or the uh, Allied forces attacking the Atlantic Wall in Normandy. Tremendous casualties, okay? The fact that this guy is in here moving around and not in a fixed position actually makes it worse because he, he knows what he's cleared effectively. So you need to be able to maneuver around them. Now, uh, in the Marine Corps, every Marine is taught the mission of the Marine Rifle Squad is to locate, close with, and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver and repel an enemy assault by fire and close combat. All right? Well, in the law enforcement world, that's maybe not the best plan of attack for regular patrol. All right? If, if you give me, or any, or better yet, you take a, a squad of a guys from uh, Infantry Rifle Battalion, just one squad, 13 Marines, and you make that squad leader just... Uh, uh, old salty ass 0369. All right, so you got one 0369 and 12 0311s, and you sit there and you put them in any position in this county, and you take the entire county sheriff's office and you say go route them Marines. And then you tell the Marine repel an assault by a numerically superior force, ready to go. All right, our sheriff's office, even though there's some shit hot people there, they're gonna get slaughtered. All right, conversely, I don't want that squad of Marines patrolling my county because the military does two things well, and not only two things: they kill people and they break shit. Whereas police officers have to do a vast amount of things well, all right? More so than kill people and break shit. So typical military tactics for regular patrol work, I agree 100% with Greg Alfreds when he said that's probably a no-go. Uh, conversely, small unit tactics are small unit tactics. When you're talking about uh, a SWAT entry, uh, a rapid deployment team uh, entry during a, a immediate action rapid deployment setup, or you know just four officers moving together, searching for a, a, a suspect. Is that any different than, you know, a Marine fire team in Afghanistan or an Army fire team in Iraq, so on and so forth? No, it's not. Small unit tactics are small unit tactics. The objective is to support each other and accomplish your mission, which from a law enforcement perspective, that mission might be, you know, find the suspect, uh, kill the active shooter, uh, find the missing kid, things like that. Whereas the military perspective, it might be, find the downed helicopter, uh, kill or capture the high value target, or uh, clear a building, like by clear a building, I mean clear it, nothing in it walks out. 
So there are there is some mission drift between the two, but in the end, all right, once once we hit that uh, three yard line, okay, and we start moving up and we stack on that door, all right, and you and you put your hand on my shoulder and you squeeze when ready. Once my foot comes up to boot that door, there is no difference at that point. The way I treat that room is going to be the same in Southern Pines, North Carolina, as it would be in Kandahar. Okay, it'll it'll be the, it'll be the same in any other city in this country as it would be in Baghdad or Fallujah. Okay. Once, once CQB is CQB and small unit tactics are small unit tactics. What can law enforcement learn from the military? Pick up a copy of FM 7 8, the Army Infantry Rifle, Infantry Rifle Platoon and Squad manual. I don't know if it's squad and platoon or platoon and squad. Anyway, uh, and I forget the, uh, the, the nomenclature for it, but uh, the Marine equivalent. All right, read both of them, and they're going to be fairly similar. All right, and, and learn and understand the basics of maneuver warfare. All right, so let's say for a minute, there's a active mass murder incident uh, at a local gig gathering area. All right, I got four officers that showed up. All right, because most of the, the municipal departments around here have, have in, or in the county have at least four people on shift, usually unless someone's sick or some shit. But all right, we show up, all right, you, you two create a base of fire, all right? Me and you, we're gonna flank around them, okay? What does that mean? If this is my bad guy, my heavy bag, and I don't know if it's in frame, if I can come straight at him, all right, that's a bad idea, because you can see me coming. Meaning, you have to assume, especially with an active killer, you've got a long gun in evidence. That could be a shotgun with slugs. That could be a rifle of some kind. It doesn't matter whether it's granddaddy's 30-30 or you know, a modern fighting rifle like a Scar Heavy, okay? Uh, these things reach a lot further than your pistol do, does. That's just a fact. So you really don't want them to see you coming if you can avoid it. So what you would have is you've got these other two guys. And you get there, and as soon as you see them, you engage them one way or another. Maybe that means popping shots. Maybe that means verbal commands. Either way, you get his attention. What that does is that focus their attention on you. Get to a position to cover before you open your mouth or start popping rounds off. That way, you know, cover something that stops bullets. And then you can start maybe engaging them with, with rounds if you have to. Get their attention focused so your other two guys can move to an off angle, get around to the side where he can't see, or get around behind him. All right? Ideally, especially if you're dealing with a lone officer response, this is even better because if you don't have the advantage of a base of fire element, what you would do is you would move off to the side or off behind because if you go hey diddle diddle up the middle and you're not wearing hard plates and homeboy has a, a rifle with steel core AK ammo, you know, 762 by 39 steel core stuff, eat soft armor for breakfast. All right, even an 1891 Mosin Nagant with a light ball stuff, you don't stand a chance in soft armor, buddy. Not, not against a rifle. Always assume there's a rifle in evidence. If you don't have hard armor on, you don't want to make that frontal assault. You are not going to win. All right, fact of life. All right, uh, I understand. You probably don't want to wear hard plates all day. They suck. I've done it. All right, <laughs> I wore hard plates every day for a long portion of my life. It's not cool, but it's better that than get a hole in your chest, okay, or fully perforating in the chest and out the back. If you don't have hard plates, you don't want to go in front of assault. That's just fact, especially against the rifle. So you might want to move preferably to an offline, maybe set up an ambush so they can come past you. Either way, get behind them, get beside them so they can't see you coming. And if you're by yourself, the first way they should know you're there isn't when you give that verbal command, police stop, drop the weapon. No, if he's shooting people, the first time he knows you're here is when your hydro shock passes through his melon or your knife jams in his throat or the lights get dim when your arm wraps around his neck, okay? Why? Because you're alone. Now, if you have a base of fire element, completely different story. All right, sit there and get in a position. You have them get there, get his attention. Police, stop where you are. Drop the weapon. At the same time you're doing that, you got two other guys moving off to the sideline. If he orients that weapon to you, establish that base of fire. Start putting rounds in it. Okay, if he's wearing body armor, who gives a fuck? Knock him down. Keep popping and pop, pop, pop. Keep putting rounds in that armor. All right, if he gives you his grape, put one in there too. This is supporting your boys coming around off to the side or better yet behind him where he can't see them and that way you can fully neutralize the target. All right, so, and then you can do this as needed for multiple shooters. If it works out really well, when they come back in the same area, now you got them in a nice nifty other little small unit type they call an L-shaped ambush. So uh, definitely take a look at uh, some of the small unit tactics, read up on it, especially if you're police officer, security officer, something like that. And tell you guys, hey, let's try this. Next time y'all do some semi initial stuff, walk them through it. Take charge. Act like a fucking leader. All right? Designate you guys are on base of fire. Me and this guy are on a maneuver element. And make it happen. I guarantee you, you'll bleed less. All right? Especially uh, with semi initial stuff, it'll hurt less. 
So if y'all have comments, feedback, let me know. Stay sharp, stay frosty, stay safe, and stay in the fight.